Real estate investment practice problem using Excel. Amortization schedule changing the payment and looking at the impact on the interest rate, keeping everything else constant. Get ready because it's time to raise the stakes with real estate. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we have three tabs on down below, the example tab, the practice tab, and the blank tab. Let's take a look at them now, starting off with the example tab, in essence being the answer key. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at what the impact on the payment would be as we change the other factors one at a time, including the loan amount, the rate amount and the term amount. Now we're going to flip that and say, well, what if we know what the payments are? What if we have budgeted for the range of payments that we think can afford? And we, we say we're going to change the payment amount and then take a look at what will have an impact on one of the other variables. In other words, if I vary the payment and I keep everything else constant, including the loan amount, and the term 30 years what will then be the impact on the rate what would the rate need to be if i was to change the payment and keep everything else constant that's what we'll take a look at here now first we might want to see that in our our little schedule down below so we add the schedule we have the payments we have first calculated the payments and then we're going to determine the rate and see what the rate would need to be holding everything else constant with those payment amounts then we'll have our little drop down the fancy drop down that we've been adding to see the payment here we'll take a look at the schedule we're not going to be updating the amortization schedule or creating it from scratch because we've done that in prior presentations you can look at them for more examples there we have the slicer that you can look at how to enter as well then we're going to create the pivot table and take a look at our comparison tables on the right hand side from information from the pivot table if you go to the second tab on over the practice tab this will have some of the information in blue which means you can format it a little bit less and practice the practice problem without having to make everything from scratch and format it in from scratch but we are going to do that all the new stuff in the blank tab we're going to do the formatting as we go here so information on the left hand side we got the home the home value we're going to say is 400,000 this time down payment still 20 percent that's 80,000 then down the 400 minus the 80 is the 320 we're going to keep the term at the standard 30 years that means 30 times 12 or months of 360 being the month term and then the rate is is what we're going to basically be deriving with a formula instead of calculating the payment we're going to be calculating the rate and then we're going to try to fix or figure out what the payment will be and change that payment and then see what the rate would need to be as we adjust the payment so let's do that down below we're going to make a little schedule the first thing we would want to do is say well if i'm just going to change the payment keep everything else constant but the rate as I change the payment, what would the related rate need to be uh, in order to make that happen? So if I have the payment down here and then the rate, this is going to be our sales. I'm going to make my little header item up top, go into the home tab, font group. Let's make that black and white. Let's center these items, center. And then we're going to go down here. Let's start with a payment of like $600 and then increase it by increments of $200 until we get to 3000 and then and then calculate the related rate. So to do that, I'm going to say this equals the 600 above it plus $200. That'll bring me to 800. If I copy that down, it'll always add 200 every cell on the way down. I'm going to put my cursor on the fill handle, bring it on down to 27 and that'll give us to the to the 3000. Let's center that, selecting these items and putting them in the alignment and center it now we're going to calculate the rate so we're going to say well what if we had 600 and we were to calculate the rate now to do this we already have the 200 up top and we got the rate of the 6.39 which i have already calculated up here let's do that calculation down below and see if we can get to the same rate down here so i'm going to put the 2000 and do the rate calculation so the rate calculation, we're going to say equals, and then we're going to type in R-A-T-E. There's the rate. We could double click on the rate or add brackets. I'm going to double click on it. Then we have the number of periods. So it starts off with the number of periods. This is related to time value money calculations related to the payment function. 
We're going to go to the number of periods. If I scroll up top, that's going to be the 360, 30 years times 12 or 360. We're going to pick up the 360. Now that cell, we don't want it to move down as we copy down. Therefore, I'm going to make it absolute by selecting F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign then before the B and the 6. Then we're going to say comma. We've got the payment amount. The payment amount is the thing that we are changing in our table here. So I'm not going to pick it up from the data up top. I'm going to pick it up from the table. That is the one that we do want to be changing as we go. So we're not going to make that absolute comma. Oh, also note that this one has to be negative. If you don't put a negative there, then it's going to give you an error. So that's, that's going to be just something you got to know on this kind of formula. It's got to be the negative payment. And then comma. We got the present value. The present value is going to be the loan amount, which we're going to keep constant at the 320 this time, which is 20% of the home, which we're going to say is 400. I'm sorry, it's 80% of the home, which we're saying is 400,000. That one, we, we do not want it to move down when we copy it down. So we're going to say F4 on the keyboard. Now, if we left it here, it would give us the rate, but it would give us a, a monthly rate because notice the number of periods we have in months here. And the payment is a monthly and we want a yearly rate so what i want to do is multiply this times 12. so we're going to close it up shift zero closing it up multiply it times 12 months to give us the yearly rate which is usually how we represent the rate so we're going to say enter i need to format that cell to make it see a percent home tab number group we're going to percentify it add a couple decimals it's about 6.39 see if that ties out to up here it does looks good let's see if i can copy it down and if i got the proper absolute references i should be able to let's put our cursor on the fill handle drag that fill handle down to the 3000 that looks good let's double click on that last one is it doing what we think it should it is it really is so now let's now let's do the same fill handle up you can do the fill handle up by the way we'll just grab the fill handle and go up and there's the rates Obviously, we have negative rates up top. Don't generally see negative rates, but anything can happen these days because I, I mean, I'm a, I wouldn't be surprised actually at this point. But in any case, let's go ahead and make these uh, blue and brackets around them. We're going to then go to the home tab font group. Let's put some brackets around it, bracketizing it, all borders. And then we're going to go to the font group and make it blue. Uh, if you don't have that blue right there, you can go to the more colors standard. There's the blue. That's the one we want. That's the one. All right. And then we got our 2000 up top. I could put a drop down here to make it fancy pantsy, even though I got shorts on. Can't get too fancy pantsy with half the pantsies, but we could put some fanciness in here. So we're going to go up top and say we want to go to the data tab. We're going to go to the forecast, not the forecast. We're going to go to the data tools. We want this item, the button, not the drop down, data validation. Let's validate this data. We don't want to take any cell here. We want to hit the drop down and we want to go to we want to go to a list. We want a list and then we're going to source that list right there and that's going to be these payment amounts, these payment amounts. That's what we're going to be paying. And then we'll say okay. And now we've got the drop down. That's a down drop down. Okay, so there's the 2000 so we've got that. And so we could see that that will impact over here. And I can, if I change this now, of course, the drop down to 14, we got the 3.29, which should match the 3.29 that we calculate down below. So we can see, we could see what the rate would need to be. Now, again, we might want to see what would happen, you know, on, on other factors as well. We might want the pivot table rather than just this one factor to take a look at. So we're going to add the pivot table here and do that process again. So we've got our table that's already been calculated. We've seen that in prior presentations. If you want to build that, you can take a look at prior presentations to do so. We're going to add the pivot table, go into the insert tab on the top. And we're going to go to the tables and pivot table, pivot table. We're going to scroll up. I want to make sure I'm in row one. I'm going to put this in an existing worksheet. Location is going to be right there on K one blank tab k1 okay we're going to scroll to the right and we're just going to build this just as we've seen in the past quite quickly because we've seen it a few times 
So if you want to do this slowly, you can take a look at it again in prior presentations. We're going to drag the year onto the rows and then just pick up the payments, the interest, the loan reduction, the loan balance. There it is, but it's ugly because the formatting is all weird. So we're going to go down here and just format that, hitting the drop downs, value of the field. We want to number value it. I like to go to currency, brackets, no dollar sign, remove the decimals. Okay, okay. Then we'll do the next one for the interest, value field. We want to say numbers, currency, brackets, no dollar sign, no decimals. Okay, okay. Then we'll do it again for the sum of the loan, value field, numbers, currency, brackets, no dollar sign, no decimals. Okay, okay. Last one's a little bit different, you'll recall, because this is the balance at the end. So we want the min balance there. And then I'm going to say number format. This is the same. Currency, brackets, dollar sign, no decimals. Okay, okay. And there we have it. Looks perfect. Almosa. We're going to select these items here. Let's put some brackets around it by going to the Home tab. Font group, bracketize it. Let's make it boldened, emboldened it. Change the header up top. Fancify the header by going to the Home tab, Font Group. Let's make it black and white. It's our standard practice. Let's wrap the text. Let's do some centering. And let's center this whole column. Alignment, center, center. And then I'm going to put my cursor on the columns, drag into column O, and squish it together. Squish it. There we go. Okay. So now we'll do let's just build some other information from the table we might want to we might want to see. So I'm going to say let's let's put our cursor over here and let's say let's say we want to say if I change the rate, we're changing the rate, so it's going to say rate change. I want that on the top of my header and so what I'm going to do is say alt enter and that allows me to kind of go in a second space within the same header without using the wrap text. It's not in another cell, but it's down below. And this is going to say, I'm going to say it's a 320,000 loan. And then I want, and then I want to look at the interest payments, something like that. I want to copy this across because I want it to go across, say, four cells. One, two, three, four. If I go to the home tab and if I was to say merge it like that, that's one way to do it. I don't like to do it that way. So I'm going to unmerge it. And then I'm going to right click on this thing and say, let's go to the format cells, alignment, horizontal, across the selection. And so there we have it. And then I can double click on this item here, put the squish that up as far as it'll go without causing any problems. So then we have the year. And we're going to say, let's let's choose then the payment amounts. So the payment amounts are the ones that we're going to change. Let's say we have 1200. Zero, zero. Let's say we have 1600, zero, zero, 2000. So in other words, if I have a $320,000 loan and I change the payment amount to these amounts, then I'm going to adjust the interest rate to whatever it would be for those payment amounts and then take a look and pull the data in terms of the interest rates as we've basically seen in the past. Let's go ahead and make this. Let's make this black and white, black and white. Let's center these items, centering. I'm going to do that same process over here, and we'll, we'll look at the loan balance as we've seen in the past in a similar fashion. So I'm going to do the same thing, rate, change, alt, enter, and then we're going to be picking up the 320,000,000 loan balance loan balance i want this going across four cells selecting those four cells right clicking on it format cells we want to go to the alignment tab horizontal across the selection and okay done these ones i'm just going to pick up the same data which will equal the year copy that across copy that across and then i can do the good old black and white here Home tab, font group, black and white. 
center these items go into the alignment and center let's put the years in one two buckle my shoe or tie my shoe because i have shoelaces instead of buckles and then we're going to scroll it on down to 30 and center let's copy those this time copy them just put them right over there there we go okay so now let's let's change our table and just just pull the data pull the data on over so if we were to change this back to 1002 the amortization table changes automatically like so and then we got to, we have to change the pivot table by right clicking on it and refreshing it so we right click refresh and then i could copy the interest if i so choose and say okay if i copy the interest and copy it pasting it right there paste it and i copy the loan balance let's copy the loan balance right click and copy and paste that over here right click paste one two three pasting one two three and you could see then the rate would have to be pretty low the interest rate would have to be 2.11 you know to make that you know what it depends on it depends on the environment you know what's low or not but in any case 2.11 and then if i change this if i change this then to what was my next one the next one was 1600 that's what we want next then the rate would be at the 4.39 matching our table 4.39 down here we'd have to refresh the pivot table let's right click on it refreshing it freshen it up that looks way fresher and then we'll copy the interest taking the interest column control c copy putting that over here on the interest pasting it with a one two three values only and then the loan balance we could take the loan balance and right click on that and copy that and then put that on over here let's do it one more time for the 2000 2000 if i was to change my payment and say i want to pay 2000 i could afford 2000 what would the interest have to be if i wanted to pay for this thing for a 320 thousand dollar loan 30 year it have to be the interest rate could be 6.3 nine percent to be able to make that happen let's go over here and then say well what would happen to my pivot table right click refresh pivot fresh copying the interest column right click and copy putting that over here right click and paste one two three copying the min balance loan balance column right click copy putting that over here for the 2000 pasting it one two three and so there we have it so we could just just some ideas you could do to construct your data from these from this information to get more detail within excel let's go ahead and just make this look nice we're going to make it blue in brackets blue and bordered selecting these font group borders bucket blue blue and bordered there it goes and then these ones too let's bucket blue it bucket border blue bucket border blue the three b so font borders blue and then we're going to say total let's do the total as has been our custom equals the sum we're going to go to the summit of the column that we're trying to sum so we could sum it up make sure you don't pick the header up because that's a number so don't pick the header up because that'll mess it up we don't want it messed up we want it unmessy so then we're going to say borders and blue so there we have it so there's just some some ideas what you could do obviously again these these tables will not change as you change the pivot table but once again you could change the pivot table in such a way to pull in different types of information that you might need beyond simply the one factor of changing the payment looking at the rate that of course the amortization table the yearly amounts and so on to change the rate now we could do the same kind of thing what if i keep the payment the same and then i change say the loan amount and say well i know what the payment is i i know what the rate is fairly standard and then what if i how much home could i purchase then uh, so we'll take possibly a look at that in future presentations